Hello everyone, my name is Michael Lombardo with Glidefast Consulting and Faracode. Today I want to give you a little walkthrough about actually what is ServiceNow. So a lot of friends and family always ask me, what is ServiceNow? I did this presentation for a school called Europe that I attended a long time ago. Europe.org if you want to find out some more information about them. But pretty good starting point to explain what ServiceNow is. This is this really is for beginners. So you ServiceNow pros out there, please don't blast me for my simplicity. <laughs> um, so as I said, my name is Michael Lombardo. I started my IT career off several years ago as a help desk and then desktop technician. I then became a ServiceNow administrator as a customer, implemented ServiceNow there. I then became a consultant at a startup, implementing ServiceNow for other customers. Then I became an independent consultant. And finally, where I am today, I co-founded two companies, Glidefast and Faracode, that do just that. We implement ServiceNow and ServiceNow Solutions for several customers. Some of the customers that I personally implemented ServiceNow at, not necessarily through Gladfast or Faracode. So as you can see, some very large organizations leverage ServiceNow. So it's really, it's, it is a platform. It's built for large and small companies. And I'll get a little bit into that. These first few slides here are really basic and really kind of walking you through into idle and, and more on the IT side of what ServiceNow is. I really want to start uh, there and then I want to branch out into all the other processes and and really what how ServiceNow is a platform and not just a ticketing system. But to get there, I must start here. I guess the first thing we can start off here is, is what is a ticket? So I went to a very reputable source Google, <laughs> and I, I wanted to give you the exact uh, definition as Google sees it. And, and basically, a ticket is a request logged on a work tracking system detailing an issue that needs to be addressed or a task that must be performed. And really, at its core, ServiceNow is a task management platform uh, that, that just has so much capability to be customized and configured and developed and expanded into so much more. The core way organizations are using it and have used it and started using it was really for the task management. And, and this task management isn't just in IT. This task management isn't just in one process. This task management is in several processes across any organization because obviously businesses have many business processes that they have to manage and many tasks that they have to manage. So we need a way to manage that. So I'll talk a little bit about the evolution of task management at organizations. A couple more slides. One thing I always like to point out to uh, customers implementing ServiceNow for the first time, because usually we, we do go the incident management route first and in, in, in the IT space. An incident is something's broken. An incident is something we need to fix fast, right? So a doctor uh, or a nurse can't use their computer. Their computer won't turn on, right? We need to fix that immediately. Uh, maybe an HR, somebody can't, you know, log into their, to view their paycheck, right? So we want to get the HR team to fix that immediately. Print our own print, you know, there's something's broken. Quest is something I don't have that I need now. I don't, I, I want a new iPhone. I don't have it today, but I want one. Uh, I want a loaner project. So really with request management, it really is an opportunity for us to deliver that as efficient as possible. And it's a repeatable process, right? How many people at organizations are going to use a new iPhone? So that should give us, you know, if we're repeating this process over and over again, we should know how long it's going to take to get a new iPhone. We should know the checks and balances we have to put in place. It's really... Uh, the request management is really built upon a workflow. So why track this information and process in an application or database? So as the evolution of IT support, I kind of broke it down into to maybe three phases that IT support went through. First, we start off with pen and paper. You needed your computer fixed or your telephone fixed or something to uh, a ticket, right? If we needed to give you some sort of ticket, it was on pen and paper. If you think about even outside of IT, a lot of things are moving to the digital space. Valet 
tickets now are, are running on phones. Before, you used to get a piece of paper. What happens? You lose that. So it all started with pen and paper. And some of the pros around that is is tracking in, in the logs, right? We are definitely able to track the tickets. We're definitely able to ensure closure. It's right there in black and white on, on piece of paper in front of us. Uh, the cons, it's slow, right? So we're getting stale data. We're not automating any pro any process, uh, any of this process. We're not we're not getting any reporting on that. We're not seeing how efficient or how we can make it more efficient, right? It's just here, here's your ticket, and as soon as it's done, it's done. We don't really have a timestamp even, uh, other than the person working with ticket may write on it, but. Reporting on that is not happening. Lack of enforcement of, of any type of process. And then email came along. And an email says, hey, we're faster. We can, we can communicate faster. We can update things faster. We, uh, we can get you the most up-to-date information as quickly as possible. Uh, we're able to track and log things, right? It's, it's, it is there somewhere. It's in black and white. It may be in somebody's mailbox somewhere, but... And accessibility, right? So we can access that on the go. We're not limited to just that pad and paper in somebody's hand or at one location. The accessibility is there. Uh, the cons of that, obviously, is we're not really able to ensure closure. If a person go, goes out sick, it's we can't access their email. We don't know. Transferring, getting help, you know, just throwing it over the fence doesn't ensure that the, the actual problem's getting resolved. Obviously no lack of automation or reporting. There's really no accountability. You send an email, really no ensuring your, your you know management, let's say, has no way of verifying or validating that you're actually completing tickets that may come or you know tasks that may come through your, your mailbox. There's no process, there's no procedure. Uh, and then we got a lot smarter, thank you. Lord, <laughs> we went to an uh, we went to the app we went to the application space. So uh, there's a lot more pros and cons as you can tell. So we have uh, a faster service through things like self service, through things like automation. Uh, we're able to triage. We're able to ensure closure. We're able to ensure. Uh, we're able to again look for automation opportunities. We're able to standardize processes that we couldn't before. We're able to say. Hey, if somebody's requesting a new iPhone, it's going to take this long. We need these requests, these approvals from these many people, which again is the workflow. And we're also able to offer it on, on mobile, and mobile, and, and give you a catalog rather than just saying, "Hey, what kind of iPhones do you have?" through email or, or uh, picking up the phone and calling. The the cons of that, I guess, where I was going here is is really our consumers really start having the expectations that this is going to work, your, your application is going to work like an Amazon, is going to work like some of the Facebook, some of these other platforms that have developed so far. So really, now that we're in the application space, we have a responsibility to make it intuitive, to make it easy, to make it quick, uh, to get people to provide a faster service. Really, at the end of the day, people want a faster service. And obviously, the leader in this space is ServiceNow. Uh, and we'll get into we'll get into why in these next couple slides. Uh, so, tell you a little bit more about ServiceNow. It's a platform built in the cloud. Now, what does that mean? Let's just pause right there because that it, people still kind of don't understand what cloud is. You know, they say, "Oh, I have Apple Cloud." Well, really, what it is is it's it does not have to be installed locally. The application itself does not have to be installed locally on machines. So when on some of these legacy applications, when we first moved to the application space, right, they they were great. We had an application, but we had to install it locally on your machine. I think we used to call them fat clients. They used to have to go on your machine. If there was an error with the installation, we had to reinstall it. If you went to a different machine, it, it wasn't there. You had to install it there. And, so everything was built, installed locally. When it's in the cloud, it is accessible just like a website. So yes, it is an application. Yes, it is a platform, but it's accessed the same way you access Facebook. Facebook's the same thing. Facebook is a platform that is in the cloud. You don't have to install Facebook other than maybe mobily on your phone, on the app store, but it is a platform. You know, when you access on your browser, you're just going to a website. 
Now the platform aspect of this, it means applications can be built on top of it as well. ServiceNow is not just binary. It's not just it is what it is. Or, or once you purchase it, uh, you can only use it the way ServiceNow made it. You can build your own applications to support your own business processes or any processes or any task management uh, you'd like in any way you'd like. So it really is a platform with a, with a set of, put it this way, it gives you uh, a toolbox. So you have tools to, that you can leverage to build applications, to build them faster, right? If you were to build an application from scratch, it would take you a lot longer than it would be to build it on ServiceNow because ServiceNow has that platform and has that baseline of work done for you where it just allows you to build on top of that. Maybe that was a little confusing, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think you'll get there as I kind of go a little bit further down this slide. What's also really nice about ServiceNow, so because it is that platform, doesn't mean you have to build all these applications from scratch. Right, so if I wanted to build an application to say or to manage, we'll go use the valet tickets again. You know, to to handle valet tickets. A really nice thing about ServiceNow is it does have pre-built applications to support your processes. Right, so obviously there's common business processes that every single business needs to support. Right, your IT business processes, your HR business processes, customer services. So those. Those customer services agent, maybe like at Xfinity or AT&T, when you call into a customer service center, they need somewhere to log that information. They're, they're taking down your, your information. They're logging your issue. It's all done on a pre-built application in ServiceNow. Now, what's great about ServiceNow is you can build on top of that. You can add automation. It's going to give you a pre-built standard application that... Um, obviously, we're going to collect things like your name, your location, what your problem is. But maybe there's additional data we need to collect. Maybe we need to know what your Comcast cable box number is, right? So we have the ability to add a new field very easily to say, hey, we need to ask you know, their Comcast box number. But again, outside of those pre-built applications, we have the ability to build a brand new application. Maybe to handle... Valet, valet tickets. You know, when a car comes in, we want to check it in, get the person's information quickly. We can build that application very quickly, a hundred times faster than building it from scratch. You know, maybe a thousand times faster. But again, uh, the real value is, uh, and the real reason why organizations are able to buy service now and implement so so quickly is because there are so many pre-built applications that they're taking feedback from all these other customers and they're constantly innovating in the application to make it easier out of the box for you to go live. A couple notes here at the bottom. Every business process has repeatable steps, right? So keep going back to the car valet, but a car comes in, we get the keys from the, the person, we, we get the information, we give them the ticket to come back and, and re retrieve their car. And when they do come back, we got to go get the car. We bring it back up for them. That, that's a repeatable process every single time. When you're ordering a new computer, we get the approvals. We go to Dell. We go to Apple. We order the computer. We receive the computer. We have to image the computer. We deliver it, right? So it's a, every business process has repeatable steps and every business has business processes. And again, employees and customers expect that consumer grade experience. They're spoiled now, we're spoiled. We want it done a certain way. We, we want an exceptional service. Uh, we want it fast. We, we, something's broken, we want it fixed immediately. We, we order a new iPhone, we want it tomorrow. This is a pretty cool slide. Why are so many uh, companies using ServiceNow? Well, they're, they're constantly innovating their, their platform and they're constantly rolling out new applications. So they're they're taking feedback from customers. What are customers building on their own? Is there, is there value in us putting this out of the box for other customers to have? It, again, it's not a binary application. It's, it's a living, breathing thing. They have, they have developers and uh, business process experts constantly looking to see how can they take it to the next level. Forbes uh, rated them number one most innovative company in the world. And that's 
unbelievable. That's above Tesla. That's above Facebook. That's above Amazon. Uh, so that was such an honor for the service, not only service now, but the service now community. And so they're, they're never comfortable in saying, this is our platform. This is how it's going to be forever. We're constantly innovating. How can we make it easier for customers to implement? How can, how can we get them to go live uh, faster, cheaper? And how can they, how can we add automation? How can we make their lives easier? That's really the power of service now. That's like so critical to their mission is to uh, continue to innovate and continue to make the, the, the lives of their customers easier. Another reason why a lot of companies are using ServiceNow is it's a single source of record. Again, it's we're using one platform. So the, be the best way I like to describe this is let's talk about the employees at a company, right? So there's obviously one list of all the employees at, at a company, right? There should be. But in the past, when you have multiple applications, that, that serve multiple different purposes. Let's say there's an HR application, right? If we go, actually, if we go kind of back up to this slide, these, these business processes used before ServiceNow used to live in different applications. So the IT department had their list of employees at the organization. HR had their list of employees at the company. Customer service, same thing, right? So everybody was siloed. Everybody, so a new employee came on, all, th these guys all had to talk together and we all know communications not you know there's always breakdown of communication so maybe IT had somebody that customer service didn't and legal had somebody that you know it maybe HR didn't so there there's it's just a constant effort to make sure all these systems maybe we had to integrate all these systems together and that takes time and development to make sure all these systems are talking to each other with service now we have one list of, of employees at a company and HR is, is accessing that one list. It's not an integration. IT is accessing that same list. HR is accessing that same list. Customer service, same thing. It's a single source of record, right? Same thing with locations. When we add a new, let's say a hospital adds a new building to their, to their uh, hospital, right? Once we add that into service now, every department's able to access that. We don't have to go to every single department and say, hey, make sure you have this new building or make sure we build this integration so that building's at it. Locations, departments, users, everything that's that common shared set of data is able to be accessed across the platform. In addition to that, let's say in, in the IT world, let's say someone had a broken computer, right? And then they go try to order a new one. Well, we're able to say, Hey, you already have a computer. It's broken. We have a ticket in. You don't need a new one. You know, again, it's it's that one single source of record that we're in one platform for everything. We don't have to go swivel chair to another system to go find out information. All that is in one single source of record. That's what that means. And the last one we talked a little bit about already is just the speed of development and deployment. We're able to roll out new applications, support new business processes immediately. You know, uh, when I was a customer, we created a way that uh, anytime a new a business service came on board, uh, we had a procedure for that. So if we were supporting uh, maybe a new application that, that you know, someone in the uh, department in the hospital purchased, right? Or patient support or something. We're, we had a process to say, hey, we need this much information. We need to know who's gonna support it, who to escalate to if issues go wrong. Is there a company that supports this? We were able to, we were able to build a process that <laughs> allowed us to onboard new processes. I mean, and we did that in about, I think we built it in uh, less than a week and we tested it another week and we were, we were live within two weeks You know, of, of, of building that new app. So really it's the speed of development and deployment because again we all you know we all want things immediate now it's a new world a little bit just throw this in there i think this is the last slide i have but what can you do to learn more about service now focus I, I, you know instead of jumping right into the technical aspect i always say if you're if you're not yet there focus on using the application first um you know what become a, a user of the application navigating through it creating incidents running reports uh, things like that. Become a user. See how they put yourself in the user shoes and, and obviously get your own environment at developer.servicenow.com. Go on YouTube, uh, learn a little bit about Idle, which I'm not going to get into now, but you know, look, look into Idle. I think it's, I think it's a great kind of way to understand, uh, 
process it, process management, task management in the IT frame, and uh, obviously go on YouTube and, and, and YouTube some service now videos. Mm-hmm.